Hello, and welcome to a video all about independence of solutions. So I've pre-written a bunch of this one because it's a lot of writing and I want to be able to walk through it and explain it without spending all my time jotting things down. So, uh, so let me get started. The goal here is to figure out when two solutions to a differential equation, a second order linear differential equation, when can two of them that we find be used to form a general solution, meaning uh, does this sum here, C1, y1 plus c2 y2 does it always allow us to solve an initial condition with uh, y of t naught equal y naught and y prime of t naught equal v naught okay so so here's a few examples so um, here's a differential equation y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y equals 0 and I've found two solutions and I want to know um, can I put these together uh, with a c1 and a c2 and solve any initial value problem so then there's another two examples. Here's one that doesn't have constant coefficients. That's a case that we haven't uh, talked about very much yet. Um, and I've got, I found two solutions to it and I want to know, well, um, it, are those enough? Can I solve every initial condition possible um, of this form? And so um, we need a method to determine that. And finally, here's another one, um, y double prime. Oh, this one should be, I see typo. Uh, Well, okay, <laughs> have to do that in blue. Okay, so y double prime plus y equals zero uh, has uh, two solutions here that I've, I've found, cosine t and sine t. So which of these work as a general solution when I put them together in that way? Okay, so I'm gonna define two things that are gonna be useful tools to understand how to answer this question. Uh, one of them, the first one is the Ronskian, and the second one is uh, the the concept of linear independence. And the linear independence should be very familiar from your linear algebra um, with vectors, but now we're gonna be dealing with functions instead. Okay, so um, how do we use the Ronskian or linear independence to answer this question? So um, first of all, here's the definition. It's a little bit complicated at first glance, but it's actually related to a familiar concept. So the Wronskian is, uh, of, it's an operator where you plug in a y1 and you plug in a y2 and out comes this somewhat complicated expression that is also a function of t. So we take y1 of t multiplied by uh, y2 of t and then subtract y1 prime of t times y2 of t. Okay, so I mean that's complicated. Where did that come from? We'll see in a moment and it actually makes a lot of sense in terms of your linear algebra. Uh, so the conclusions that we're going to be able to draw from these two things are as follows. If we find that the Ronskian is not equal to zero for any t, so there's no t for which it's equal to zero, then yes, we do have a general solution over here. This guy is going to be a general solution in that case. We can also check to see if y1 and y2 are linearly independent. And if they are linearly independent, again, then we have a yes answer. Now it's also true vice versa for both. We know that if the Ronskian is zero everywhere, then these two solutions over here can be combined to form a general or cannot be combined to form a general solution. And if we find that y1 and y2 are linearly dependent, then the answer is no, we can't solve any initial condition with this expression here. Okay, um, so uh, I'm not going to go through a complete proof of all that, but I'm going to illustrate, first of all, the Ronskian, uh, how, how it works, and then uh, I'll talk about linearly independent solutions. Okay, so let's look at example one here. So um, we've got this equation and we have a solution and I want to know, or we have two solutions that I found and I want to know if y of t given by c1 e to the minus 2t plus c2 e to the minus 2t plus 1, can I solve any initial condition of the form y of t0 is equal to 0 and y prime of t0 equal to, oh, not 0, equal to y not. and y prime of t not equal to v naught. Okay, so uh, let's just plug it in and see. So we get c1 e to the minus 2 t naught. Uh, so this is, this is y, oops, this is y of t naught. And I see that c1 e to the minus 2 t naught plus c2 e to the minus 2 t naught plus one has to be equal to y naught and y prime of t naught is equal to minus two from the chain rule, e to the minus two t naught, minus two again, oh, I forgot my c's, sorry about that, here we go, c1 e to the minus t two t naught, 
plus, no, minus 2, c2 e to the minus 2 t0 plus 1 equal v0. So we have to solve this system of two equations for c1 and c2. And the question is, can we always find a c1 and c2 uh, to solve this problem for any y0 v0? And if we can, then we have a general solution. And if we can't, then we don't have a general solution. We've got to go hunt for another solution. So I can rewrite this as a matrix equation, and then we have some tools from linear algebra that will help us answer this question. So if I write e to the minus 2 t naught and e to the minus 2 t naught plus 1, and then minus 2 e to the minus 2 t naught, and minus 2 e to the minus 2 t naught plus 1, multiplied by c1 c2 equal y naught v naught. So that's the matrix version of that equation. And now the question of whether um, this can be used to solve any equation, um, we can answer it in a number of ways. So um, one way to think about this is um, to just say uh, that the matrix in front here, if this matrix is invertible, then we can always solve the problem because we just multiply through by A inverse and we get a C1 and a C2. But if this matrix in front is not invertible, then we have a problem inverting and we have to solve. And when we row reduce the augmented uh, column in the row reduction, um, it's not going to, you know, we may end up with a one, zero, 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 and something non, uh, it's not a non zero, that looks too zero like. So we may end up with something like this, where this is some non zero number and this is some non zero number and this is zero. And if we end up with this situation, we can't solve it. If we end up with a situation where this just happens to come out to be zero, then we can solve this problem. So not all initial conditions, why not v not, will allow for, oops, will allow for this situation where it works nicely. And so let's just check the determinant, and that will tell us if the matrix is invertible or not. So the determinant of, I won't rewrite the whole matrix, I'll just put a little ditto in there. So the, the determinant of this matrix is going to be e to the minus 2 t naught, and then I have to multiply that by minus 2 e to the minus 2 t naught plus 1. And then I subtract from that. Now there's a minus 2 in the product I'm going to get, so I get plus 2 e to the minus 2 t naught e to the minus 2 t naught plus 1. So we could put things together and simplify it a little bit, but we don't even have to. You can see that this expression is exactly the negative of this expression. So the determinant here is equal to 0. And so these are not linearly independent, or see, these, are, these do not form a solution, a, a general solution form, a general solution. Okay, so what is that determinant? So I'm just going to erase this and rewrite it in a slightly different form, and you'll see that what we found was the Ronskian was equal to zero everywhere. Okay, so let me just um, remind you where all the pieces came from. I had a piece here and a piece there. So this one was y1 of t naught, and this one down here was y2 prime of t naught, and then I subtracted. Now um, this one was y1 prime of t naught, and this one was y2 of t naught. And so this is exactly the Ronskian of y1 and y2 evaluated at t naught, and we found, by just calculating it, that that was equal to zero. And so um, the, it's the invertibility of this matrix that I got that is directly tested by the Ronskian. So that's why if the Ronskian is non-zero everywhere for all t, then for a particular t, t naught, here, um, if this were not equal to zero, then I would know that I could solve this particular initial condition. And so that's why the Ron scheme being non-zero for all t guarantees that I have a fundamental solution, uh, that I have a, a general solution, that y1 and y2 form a general solution. So that term I just use, fundamental solution, uh, set, that's what we refer to. y1 and y2 are a set of functions that form the fundamental solution to the differential equation. But we'll stick with the terminology, general solution, usually. Okay, so that is example one. That's a case where the Ronskian is equal to zero, so we are in that vice versa case, where if the Ronskian is equal to zero, then this does not form a, a general solution. So you can go through example two and example three on your own and do the exact same calculation, and but for those functions, and what you should find is that for example two, you'll, well for both of them, for example two and example three, you should find that the Ronskian is not equal to zero for all values of t. 
And so interesting fact about the Ronsky and when you're plugging in y1 and y2 solutions of the same differential equation, the same second order linear differential equation, is that it'll either be exactly zero or it'll be exactly not zero. Well, it'll be not zero everywhere. And so that makes it a little simpler to evaluate these, this condition. Okay, so let's define uh, linear independence. In fact, I'm going to define linear, li linear dependence and linear independence will mean not linearly dependent. So linear dependence of two functions, and these could be solutions to a differential equation or just any two functions, but we're going to think in terms of solutions because uh, that's what we're trying to solve the problem on. So uh, linear dependence of two functions, y1 of t and y2 of t. So they are linearly dependent if um, there are constants c1 and c2 so that c1 y1 of t plus c2 y2 of t can be made equal to zero. So can you find a linear combination of them that zeroes them out? And this is the same definition as we had in linear algebra. We're just now dealing with the functions. Okay, so that's the definition, and they're linearly independent otherwise if you cannot find such c1 and c2. Okay, so if you, no matter how hard you search, you are, it's impossible to find a c1 and c2 that add these up to zero, then you would say these are linearly independent. Okay, so, uh, so how does that relate to linear dependence relate to um, the Ron scheme. Okay, well, uh, suppose, so what I'm going to show first is that if they're linearly dependent, the Ron scheme is equal to zero exactly, and then I'll go the other way saying, okay, if the Ron scheme is zero, then they're linearly independent. So those two ideas are basically the same. So let's suppose that C1 Y1 of T plus C2 Y2 of T is equal to zero for some numbers c1 and c2. Okay, well, if that's true, I can take the derivative of that expression. On the right-hand side, I get this, c1 y1 prime of t plus c2 y2 prime of t equal to zero as well. And now what we have is two equations that we can write down in a matrix form, and that matrix form is y1 of t, y2 of t, y1 prime of t, y2 prime of t, multiplied by c1, c2, and that's equal to the zero vector. Okay, so in other words, we can find a c1, c2 that multiplies this matrix and gives me the zero vector. So what that means is that the columns of this vector have to be linearly independent, because I take the c1 and I multiply it by each of these two, and I get a vector y1, y1 prime, multiplied by c, plus y2, y2 prime, multiplied by c1 by c2, and those add up to zero. That's what this says. So another way of, of saying that oops, is that the determinant of this matrix is zero. So we know now that the determinant of this matrix has to be equal to zero, but that matrix is y1 of t times y2 prime of t minus y1 prime of t times y2 of t. And that is exactly the Ronskian of y1 and y2 of t. And we, can, we, we find just by the fact that this equation is has a non-zero solution, c1 and c2 are non-zero, and we still can solve it, that means that this determinant is equal to zero, so the Ronskin is equal to zero. So if we have linearly dependent vectors, if we can find a c1 and c2 that allows us to add them up and make zero, then we know the Ronskin is going to be zero. And if we know that the Ronskin is zero, Then we know that the determinant of this matrix, I'll just put this is the same matrix yet again, we know that the determinant is zero, so we know that y1 of t, y1 prime of t, y2 of t, y2 prime of t, we know that this is not invertible. And if that's not invertible, then the matrix equation y1 of t, y2 of t, y1 prime of t, y2 prime of t, times c1, c2. For some c1 and c2 out there, we can find them so that this matrix product is equal to zero. That's 
one of the conditions of, of matrix not being invertible, that there are non-trivial solutions to this homogeneous equation. Okay, so what does that say? Well, the first line of this just says that there's a C1 out there, so that's and a C2 out there, so that C1, Y1, plus C2, Y2 is equal to zero. That's the first line of that matrix equation. And that is precisely saying that Y1 and Y2 are linearly dependent. So we now have linear independence is synonymous with the Ronskian not equal to zero and that for all t and we also have um, that the Ronskian not equal to zero for all t is synonymous with y1 and y2 giving us a general solution. Okay, and in another video, I'll we do a few examples uh, showing how to find the linear dependence of a y1 and y2.